And welcome back. Will Worsham joins us now for this week's Speaking Legal Discussion. He answers a viewer's legal question on the air. Let's take a look at today's question. Welcome, Will, by the way. All right. I purchased a business from a former employer. After the contracts were signed and the payment made, my former boss restarted a similar business and is now trying to steal the clients I inherited in the purchase. Is there anything I can do? Well, that's a great question. It is a good question. And it's going to depend a lot on some of the documents. He talked about the contracts being signed. Normally, when you transfer a business, especially a business of that type, you're going to have some non-compete clauses built in or some non-solicitation agreements built right. in. Mm -hmm. So hopefully he can look back at his documents and he can look through that and say, oh, yeah, there's a non-solicitation agreement. There's non-compete clauses in here. And then he can use those to enforce his rights to maybe push that former employer back kind of where they belong. Are non-compete clauses enforceable? Because I hear in different places, oh, no, you can't do that. Okay, non-compete clauses can be enforceable. There are lots of restrictions on them. They have to be considered reasonable in time and place. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times you'll see when they're written, non-compete agreements will say you can't do this type of business mm -hmm. within a hundred miles right and and it's only for the within the next two years for the next two years following the signing of the documents within a hundred mile radius or something like that mm -hmm. if that's deemed to be reasonable it probably would usually what also goes along with that is a liquidated damages clause whereas if you're in violation of this you'll pay a, a damages equaling a hundred dollars a day or a thousand dollars a day or whatever and that's all agreed to ahead of time mm -hmm. um, so hopefully that's in his document. If it's not, we're getting to a much, much murkier situation. One is finding a new lawyer because somebody <laughs> didn't draw it up. Somebody yeah. screwed up. But what if there is just, it was just a handshake? Well, it, that could be a real problem. Now we've got, it says contracts, so I'm relying on mm -hmm. there being some documents, but let's just assume for the sake of going forward that those documents don't have those types you of documents. You drew it up yourself. Okay, sure. Yeah. Drew it up yourself. Um, non compete not me, because I would have put them in oh, there. No, I know. But <laughs> I drew it up, and I you didn't know. It I didn't think to put a non compete. Sure. I trusted the guy. Sure. Yeah. Um, there might be some actions here. You could look at tortious interference of contract, um, some things like that um, that might give you some mm -hmm. grounds to at least go forward. But it could be very, very tricky in absence because we're we're in favor of competition in this country. We kind of mm -hmm. believe in that. We yeah. like businesses that compete. That's what keeps prices low and quality high. Mm -hmm. You said tortious interference of contract. What does that mean? Well, <laughs> what that means is that you did a bad thing and interfered with somebody else's contract. Mm -hmm. It's kind of one of those areas of law that, that is well developed in some ways and not so well developed in others and mm -hmm. oftentimes doesn't apply in areas where you would hope that it would. But, uh, you know, kind of here as we look at this question today, without something in writing, uh, you know, we're kind of kind of backing up and looking at whatever plays we might be able to run. Mm -hmm. Hopefully those documents are going to hold the key for them here. I would hope so. What, do you have to prove that the client solicited you? They, I couldn't help it. I told them to go to you. You bought the business, but they wouldn't leave me alone. They kept coming back. I mean, do you have to try to prove that that person meant ill will against you and your business? Well, there are different types of agreements, so it depends on what the agreement is going to say. So if it's in writing, it says, I agree not to compete, then it doesn't matter who solicited who. Mm -hmm. You can't compete, so you would be in violation of that, even mm -hmm. if that client came to you. Now, we've you got can't a situation. have the door open, even, in other words. Well, uh, right, because you would be in competition for yeah. any yeah. new clients. Non-solicitation is another agreement, and it can mm -hmm. apply in a couple of ways. It can say, you're not allowed to go after existing clients. Mm -hmm. You can't solicit those clients. It could also say you can't solicit vendors, so you can't get the same suppliers. Oftentimes it also says you can't solicit employees. You're yes. not allowed to try to entice mm -hmm. employees mm -hmm. away from me to your new business as well. All right, pay attention, get it in writing. All Absolutely. right, if you have a legal question for Will, you can email him at wworsham at color10.com and he'll answer your question on the show. Will, thanks. thanks You're welcome, Will. thank you. All right, we'll be back with more Ozarks live right after